Hey, this is David Weeb. We're going to be playing Cities in Motion together. I haven't yet seen a uh, Let's Play or anything like it video for uh, this game, and since I was interested in one myself, I thought, well, I may as well bite the bullet and buy it, and then make one uh, myself. I've only had time to play through the tutorial, only about an hour's playtime so far. Um, so for this video, I'm going to skip the campaign and go straight to the sandbox to point out what I've learned and see what else we can uh, uh, see what else we can work out. The game comes with uh, four cities to begin with, plus the tutorial towns. You have Amsterdam, Air, Berlin, Helsinki, and Vienna. They appear to be modelled fairly well in real life. I've only been to Berlin of those, and it seems fairly good. It also comes with a map editor that seems uh, pretty comprehensive, uh, and um, probably probably a good way to uh, see if you can model your own town. But I'll show you if you go back to uh, map editor. If you want to create a new map, it asks you to set up a location. Um, either in Austria, Finland, Germany, Netherlands, or UK. So I suppose that changes the, uh, the building types that it uses, but uh, it would be interesting to try and model any, uh, any city outside of those areas to begin with. So what we're going to do is go back, we're going to set up a new game a scenario in the sandbox in Berlin. We'll set the starting year to 1980, and I will choose the best company logo ever. We're going to play it as the Omnibus Transport Corporation, and start the game. Now, uh, Cities in Motion is a surprisingly small game. It's only 350 megabytes, so it downloaded in like 11 minutes for me. I was really pleased with that. Interestingly, Steam tells you that uh, it'll need a CDK to activate when you uh, start playing the game. It's actually a blatant liar. The game hasn't asked me for a CD key whatsoever, unlike, say, Dawn of War. So we can start playing the game, and I'll quickly show you around the uh, the interface and what we have. So we'll just pause for now, since we're on January 1, 1980. This is Berlin. Uh, what you can see is that it, it's modelled um, with, you know, a, a, a fair amount of um, attention to detail. You can see that Unter den Lindenstrasse um, is set up to look uh, like the major road is in real life. Um, it's not picture, picture perfect, but it's pretty good. So let's start taking a look around the interface. Up here you've got your three basic controls. You can either select things, you can construct things, or you can bulldoze them. Uh, you have reputation meter, so you can see roughly uh, what people think of your company. That's affected by things like waiting times, your uh, service distribution, so whether or not you're servicing different uh, sectors of the community, that kind of thing. You can see your balance. You can go to your uh, uh, home section to at your HQ to see your uh, financial details to take out loans that kind of thing. Uh, you can go to your vehicle depot to see what vehicles you have. You can set up lines in the line uh, section and view graphs that include the uh, the world economic climate. So, for instance, when the world is in an eco economic recession, you can't charge as much for tickets. Your own income will drop as well. So, in that respect, it's fairly similar to um, uh, to the old um, tycoon games like Railway Tycoon. Um, where your income is directly affected by uh, the world economic climate as well. Uh, you can see a roster um, panel which I think shows different kinds of vehicles. Yeah, it must, sh must show different kinds of vehicles. And the menu which is uh, also accessible from the escape. So, uh, how about we start by setting up our first set of loops. Now, I'm going to set up uh, the easiest kind, I think, which is to link people's homes to their workplaces. You can see that in the info view down here and on the minimap you'll see uh, uh, where w homes, workplaces, shopping, that kind of thing are distributed. You can also sort them by type. So for instance, I'm looking right now at uh, homes of all kinds. You can also sort by blue collar workers, white collar, business people, and so on. So what I want to do right now is link up um, first, say, white collar homes with white collar workplaces. And a nice feature of the game is that if you select white collar, and then uh, change between. You can actually see where white collar people uh, are using um, the different facilities available to them. So, for instance, we can switch easily between white collar homes and workplaces and, and link them really easily. So, for instance, I can see that uh, white collar people want to work um, in the center of the city, and the homes are generally distributed um, in four main areas. So, I'm going to start by linking up uh, over here with their workplaces. Oh, actually. We'll start by linking up their homes here with their workplaces here. So, starting um, with bus routes because they're really easy to set up. We'll start with uh, setting up some bus stops. So you can actually change which side of the road your uh, bus stops are going to be on, and that can become critically important and mind-blowingly confusing if you're not paying attention to what you're doing. Um, buses 
and, and trains and trams can only travel on one side of the uh, infrastructure you have set up for them. So if you're not paying attention, it can become very, very challenging in order uh, just just keeping up with what you've done. So uh, we're going to set up the last few bus stops. We're going to avoid the uh, high traffic areas. And now what we want to do is link to, now that we've linked up the homes, we want to link up the workplaces. You can see that the workplaces are uh, very heavily concentrated in this area, which makes it really easy uh, to connect that bus stop then up here. Oops, where were they? In this area, so put a bus stop there on that side of the road, another one on that side, and then we'll loop back down this way. Perfect. Now we can go back to the selection tool and I'm going to start setting up a line to connect those bus stops to each other. So this was the first one I set up, I think. We're going to go add stops, add this one to this one. You can see if I zoom back in, um, the direction in which the bus will travel. The blue line, I think, ten generally tends to indicate the speed at which the um, the particular transport option will travel. Uh, I haven't seen anything to dispute that yet. So we're going to set up the rest of these stops. I think I had a loop up here then up here, and then double back down this way, and then I'm going to uh, put it here. Fantastic. Now I need to buy some vehicles for the line, so I'm going to uh, select a bus that isn't hideous. A Jubilee Turtle, why not? Select that one, then you can activate the line, and then begin. So I'm taking it off pause, and while I do that, I'm going to uh, set up another set of lines. Now we've ac uh, worked out how our white collar workers are going to get to um, to their work. Let's see if we can get them to leisure as well. Why not? So I haven't done this before. Let's look at leisure. So you can see we've got these stops here that show up in blue on the mini map. Um, we can connect them to our large airport terminal. I'm not sure why that's going falling under leisure. Um, to do with the church, but why not? Let's connect those two as well. We're going to reuse these same bus stops but at least for this one that's going to be a bit of a challenge because we need to loop it in the opposite direction in order to make sure that the traffic travels in a coherent sort of fashion. So let's set up bus stops. We're not going to link anywhere over here. We just want to be able to uh, uh, we just want to be able to connect up really simply with these two major, um, major items. So we'll connect directly to that part of the line, create a new line, add stops. This one will connect to here and then I'll have it double back. Fantastic, our line is now closed so we can buy vehicles for it. I'll uh, just buy one for that and then we can activate the line, people will start using it. Now white collar workers are well serviced so let's see if we can uh, um, find them some shopping as well. It looks like the department store up here is a uh, hot sort of place to go. We'll see if we can connect it directly to Route 1 as well. So, I'll put a stop here, and then let's see if there's anywhere else that we can uh, that we can connect up in this general area as well. So we have our shopping, we have leisure up here, let's see if we can connect these three in the same route. So we'll go bus stop as well, up here, we're going to loop around down there, I hope you can do that, no, you don't appear to be able to do that. So that's a bit irritating. I'm gonna uh, delete that and get like 90% of my money back. We'll put it on the other side of the road because I was retarded and didn't look begin with, to begin with. We'll put this bus stop back down here and another here to cover this area as well. Why not? And I'll create a new line and start adding stops. So what we have is our initial line up here, which can connect department store up here, here. There's another stop down here. Oops, our last one down here. And I have to set it up in a loop, so I may as well put it via that one and then close the line. Fantastic. So I'm going to manage the vehicles. <coughs> I'm just going to buy one vehicle now because I'm a cheapskate. You can see that when you buy a vehicle, you can actually send it straight back to the depot, or you can buy vehicles straight into the depot and move them around as you want. The depot is just kind of like your inventory. Inventory. You can you can put vehicles wherever you want to, in order to service the needs of different lines. So now we have one vehicle on that line as well. Our white collar workers should now be fairly well serviced. We can go back to 
the original lines to see what we've got. So, if we focus on this bus stop down here, I'm going to uh, remove the data view so we can uh, just see the city in all its glory. This data view down here, we can see we've got on line one, three people, most of whom are fairly happy uh, with the service, just chilling out this bus stop waiting for the next.